tell you, I mean, for you guys to sit here and say you're not worried about the offense next year with the guys that they're potentially losing, I mean, I, I, I just, it boggles I, my mind. When I you mean, sit here and think about how bad the offensive line was this year, okay? And truth be told, Jonah Williams wasn't great, but Jonah Williams wasn't terrible either. No. I mean, he, in fact, he did a pretty nice job when all was said and done changing positions this year. Yeah. Was he great? No. Was he better than average? Damn right. He was better than average. Veteran player, been around a while. Now, were you paying him too much money? Nothing they could do about that. He had already had a contract. But now, all of a sudden, some of these mock drafts are starting already. And, 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 and believe me, we're not going down that road for a while. I mean, we're not, go we're not going there. Let's do it. But, you know, a lot of the, the, the mock drafts that have come out here in just in the last three or four days are predicting the Bengals are going to draft a tackle out of Alabama. That there is a lot of very high end in Mel, Copper, Mel Kuyper's top 25 prospects overall. Seven of the top 25 are offensive tackles. And they're talking about drafting a kid out of Alabama, right? Two-year starter, called him a mauler in the run game and very good in the pass. Okay, that's fine. Didn't we hear the same stuff about Jackson Carmen? Three-year starter at Clemson, left tackle, right? Protected Trevor Lawrence in his blind side for three years. Couple national championships. How'd that work out? How's it worked out with them drafting and developing offensive line? Their three best offensive linemen are, have all been free agents. Right. Okay. And so now... We're supposed to not be worried about their offense. If I'm hearing everybody in the room right, and I think that's what everybody just said, if I'm not mistaken. So now we're not worried about the offense next year. You have a brand new offensive coordinator next year. You're going to need a brand new right tackle next year. Are you trusting the left guard next year? You got a center and a right guard who at times were good and at times they downright stunk. They're a year older. You're facing the possibility of T. Higgins not being here. You're certainly facing the possibility of Tyler Boyd not being here. And you guys aren't worried about the offense because of one guy being healthy? There's a chance Joe Mixon's not here next year. Say what you want about him. Thousand-yard rusher last season. When they gave him the ball, the cat does okay. He can catch it out of the backfield. I would argue with a stronger offensive line. He's a 12 to 1300 yard rusher per season, even now. And you guys tell me you're not worried about the offense because Joe Burrow is going to be healthy. I That's think exactly I, I think that the quarterback position in the NFL, especially if you have a top tier quarterback, is truly. Uh, I mean, if you if you had to place how much percentage a player matters, it's like 85%. Uh, 85 is not. I, I, it, well, let me, let, let me give you an example. I, I, a lot of people have been saying the Chiefs' offense isn't great, right? Right. So, so the Chiefs have Travis Kelce and they have Rasheed Rice. Outside of that, he, Patrick Mahomes has zero people to throw to. Zero. Negative people. You have Isaiah Pacheco, who's been very good. So next year, if you're able to sign Mixon, if you have Jamar Chase – you're going to have T. Higgins presumably under a tag, or you trade him, and you'll replace that talent with a different wide receiver. I think you'll still be able to compete at a high level, especially with Joe Burrow. If you don't have Joe Burrow, we have nothing. And, and I think at this point, we, we have to consider Joe Burrow to be the guy that he's been over the past two years, maybe not last year because he was hurt. Here's the thing that, like, you, you say the reason that we aren't worried is because one guy being healthy. Yes, I truly believe that if Joe Burrow is healthy and Jamar Chase is healthy, that this offense will be fine, if not good, if not one of the best in the league. It, I, I'll, I'll give you an analogy here. If you look at – if you have a defense like, like Lindsey Steelers, right, and you look at that defense and they're losing a safety, they're losing a linebacker, new D.C. coming in, are you overly worried about that defense? No, because you know why? Because you got that one guy, you got T.J. Watt coming off the edge. Now here on the offensive side, that's what we've got. We've got an elite guy, or at least a perceived elite guy. When he's healthy, he appears to be elite in Joe Burrow. We don't know how it's going to be after that second, second injury. Could come back, and we don't know, right? There, there's a, right? There is a question mark there, and that's, that's the biggest concern, is, is, is Joe Burrow still that guy coming off a second season-ending injury? That's the biggest concern, honestly, Tom. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the offensive coordinator because we know Zach Taylor's still going to call the same plays. 
it's not we, we still have a top three wide receiver in Jamar Chase. And I think that we can supplement what, what T. Higgins provided this year in either free agency or in the draft. And we certainly could supplement what T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd combined gave this team. Jonah Williams, that's a big miss. Now that is gonna be that's that's the biggest thing that I think that's much a larger loom than than what we're gonna do with T. Higgins. Joe Mixon, you know my take on running backs. So it all things considered. The phrase that I've said multiple times on this show, and I will say until I don't think it's true anymore, is that if you keep number nine upright, you give him time, I think this offense is going to be great. Because when he was healthy this year, as I previously mentioned, this team was one of the best, if not the best offenses in the league. That was only a five-game stretch, but they played some tough teams. And I'm cherry-picking here. But I don't know. When, when, when he's been here for a full season, he's quarterback the two best offensive seasons by a quarterback in this franchise's history. And I get all the questions loom, all the, all the things, but from what I've seen with nine, you keep him upright, I'm not worried about him. And not to mention the offense looked good under Jake Browning. And I think that is something. And he didn't really even utilize Jamar Chase. I would say Jamar Chase had one good game with Jake Browning. Mm-hmm. I, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's really accurate. only had one or two big plays. Yeah. And, truth and, be and, told. And, and Jake Browning was able to figure it out. They, they ch- kind of changed things up, utilized the screen game. So I think Zach Taylor is capable of figuring it out without some of these said superstars. If you, if you lose T Higgins, I think he can figure it out. I don't think Charlie, I don't, I don't think uh, Charlie Jones will be able to downtown uh, Charlie Jones, downtown Charlie Jones will be able to replicate T Higgins. I don't think Yoshi's as good as T Higgins, but I think they can be serviceable. I think they can be utilized in a way that the offense is still productive. I, and, and I, and I truly believe that. So I, I'm not concerned about Dan Pitcher being the offensive coordinator. I'm not concerned about anything other than what Reed says. And that is truly the most important thing is Joe Burrow has to be healthy this year. He has to be. Well, you know, here's the thing though. I mean, do, do we really know? And look, we, we, we probably shouldn't know because you know, there's, there's this HIPAA thing out there and, and look, we all want our, our, our health, you know, privacy, but Look, I said this about the Reds injuries last year, and I'll continue to say it until I go to my grave, which might be this afternoon. I don't believe anybody when it comes to this stuff. I don't believe any of them. When they told us that Hunter Green was going to be missing 10 days, who was the first guy that told you around here, don't buy it? When they told you Lodolo, going to miss a couple of starts, right? No. I hope it's true, but I don't believe any of them. And it's not that they're deliberately lying to you. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm not suggesting that Tim Kremchek with the Reds or the uh, Kettering team doctors with the Bengals um, are lying to anybody. I'm just saying I don't believe what they tell me. Those are two things can be right at the same time because they're only available to share with you so much. Burrow had made the comment about, "Ah, I'm hoping OTAs. Well, I hope he's right. But what if he's not? What if he's not? What if we drag into now, Casey, another year of training camp? No Joe Burrow to be found. Can't get him on the field. They came out and said this year, which I found to be very telling. I think most people let this one slip, you know, into Never Never Land. There were people, including Joe Burrow, who made the comment, they wish they would have played in the preseason. They wish they would have gotten some reps in the preseason. There were a number of players on offense who said that. Not media, not former Bengals. No, these were current players. Okay, well, you got Burrow coming back. What if all of a sudden now... You know, we're drifting into training camp again. Here we go with this dance again, okay? And then we get into the whole, well, you can't play. You even said it. You can't play Burrow in the first season if he's coming back from an injury, right? Okay, well, do you play him? If he's healthy and ready to go? He hadn't played football since November or October, whatever it was. That's why, you know, I don't know how anybody in their right mind can tell me that you're going to let, conceivably, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Jonah Williams, Joe Mixon, 
all walk out the door. You got a quarterback coming back from a very <laughs> serious wrist injury. And people are not worried about the offense? The, well, the, well the, what happened to the Chiefs, Tom? This, we're not talking about the Chiefs. Well, well, I'm well, talking about the greatest one of the – already correct. one of the ten correct. greatest quarterbacks in the history of the league. Five. He's playing in the AFC Championship game for the sixth straight season. He is never – N-E-V-E-R. He is never hurt. Right. He's won two Super Bowls and played in three. Don't compare the Chiefs to the Bengals well, because there is no comparison – between the Chiefs and the Bengals. N-U-N, none. I don't want to compare the Chiefs to the you Bengals. You just brought them up. I want to be the Chiefs, Tom. Well, of course you do. I want to fall. This is what I'm talking about with, with the Cincinnati Bengals. This is where we find out what this organization, not just Joe Burrow, not just Zach Taylor, but this organization is made of. Can we, when you, when you pay a guy top dollar like the Bengals pay Joe Burrow, you fall into these problems that are, you're going to have guys that, that need to be paid. You can't pay them because of the salary cap. Guys are walking out the door. You're, you're going to miss on some draft pick. All these things. Offensive coordinators, after success, they leave. you got to fill those replacements. When you succeed in this league, everyone wants a piece of you. Everyone wants the Jesse Bates. Everyone wants the T. Higgins. Everyone wants the Brian Callahan. Right. Other people want the damn pitchers. That's right. Can you keep some guys in the, the building, and can you replace them? When I say I want to be the Chiefs, Everything that we talk about with the Cincinnati Bengals has happened to the Chiefs. They lost their running back, Kareem Hunt. They lost their ty wide receiver, Tyreek Hill. They lost their left guard, Orlando Brown Jr. They lost their offensive coordinator, Eric Bieniemy. These are all symptoms of succeeding in this league like the Bengals have with a healthy Joe Burrow for the last two years. Yep. So when I say... When I bring up the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm not saying the Cincinnati Bengals are the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. I say I want them to be the Kansas City Chiefs, as every team in the NFL does. So, yeah, these are just problems. These are symptoms of success. How do you deal with them? And that's what the Bengals are going to have to, to figure out. Now, the one thing that I know is that if you've got an elite quarterback, you put yourself in front of the eight ball. You put yourself ahead of most teams in this league. And here in Cincinnati, we believe we have an elite quarterback based off what we've seen. Is there some injury problems? Is there some question marks about, about can he stay on the field? Sure. Because he's missed two, two halves of seasons now. Mm -hmm. He has missed almost every preseason. Yep. There's some question marks there. But when he's out on that field, this team looks pretty dang good. So I'm not going to worry about the offense until I perceive that there's things to worry. If, if, if they come out in all of the, all of the stop gaps that they've had, whoever they get to play right tackle isn't playing well. That's a worry. I'm going to worry then. If, if Dan Pitcher isn't scheming with Zach Taylor to get guys open, I'm going to worry then. Yeah. If whoever we have to replace T Higgins and Tyler Boyd aren't catching passes, I will worry then. If Joe Mixon who doesn't come back or whoever we get to replace him can't break a tackle, I'll worry then. But at this moment, if if, if nine's going to be healthy, that's the only thing I'm worried about. Is he healthy? And, I, and you're, you're right. There, there's some question marks about, like, why, aren't we, why don't we know enough about this off this injury? And we're not going to learn anything about it. We don't we're we're going to find out when they start showing up when they're supposed to be there. Right. So that's that's why I brought up the Chiefs. That's I why I say I'm not worried. All right. All right. All right. All right. I just I, I look at, you know, I look at Kansas City and and, and, and everything you just said is true. But the one, con the two constants, they can let an Orlando Brown Jr. walk out the door. And they go out and get a guy who's a younger version of him that arguably this year was a better version of him. They, they find a way to bring in offensive linemen, develop them, and, and don't spend stupid money on them. And yet they get the most out of them. And here they are again. We talk about these elite quarterbacks, the Burroughs, the Jalen Hurts, the Justin Herberts. We talk about all these guys. Who's the one guy every year still standing? There's only one. Your guy. My guy. Patrick Mahomes. That's Reed's guy. That's Reed's guy. He should be everybody's guy. Yeah. I mean, he is. He is. I mean, I think he proved a lot just this season alone. But, yeah, I mean, um, 
Bengals have lots of questions to answer. I think that when you have number nine, just like Reed said, it's you feel like you're in a pretty good spot. You're in front of the eight ball. I will say this, and I know that you'll probably go back to the you can't really trust what you hear, but Joe Burrow said that he expects T. Higgins back. I expect that he, the, they're, they're going to probably tag him. If they can't get a deal done, he'll be back. So there's that answer. Yep. And then the right tackle is a huge question mark. I know you don't want to go in the draft stuff, so we won't go there. But there are some options in free agency, and free agency is, what, a month away from now, Reed, yep. something like that? Right. Yep. So – yeah, we'll have to just keep an eye on uh, the more developments, see if there's any cuts, because there, there's another big deal that we have to talk about, too, is like, you know, we're not getting a lot of whole, a whole lot of production out of guys that are getting paid a whole lot of money, like you said. I mean, the guard spot, center spot, the right or the left end spot, the third tackle, defensive tackle spot, yep. all those positions that we paid a lot of money towards aren't resulting in a whole lot of production, so... That's maybe something we also have to keep get ready for moving forward. And I mean, 